Welcome back everyone. We are here for another video of this intro to the uh, Unreal Engine course. Uh, in this video we're going to be talking about adding uh, objects, uh, items to characters. So we are going to do this through the use of sockets and we are also going to dive a little bit into sound, uh, adding sound to our animations just because uh, this makes it all a little bit more realistic and a little bit more, um, well, basically what you want. Uh, so we're going to start off with, let me see, we're going to start off here first and foremost with uh, importing a character or an animation. Uh, let's have a look. We are in this uh, environment and we're going to start with an animation. So this one's or this one, at least you can download yourself, the Animation Starter Pack, it's free. Uh, and I'm going to look for a animation where, for example, they're firing from, let's see, a uh, idle hip, idle break, let's see, there should be a, let's type in just fire. And I want, yeah, fire from the hip. Let's do that one, right? So we're gonna just put a guy firing from the hip, or maybe we put him here at the back, somewhere there. Let's press F so we can focus on him. All right, so he's here, and let's rotate him 90 degrees. There we go. I'll put him at the back here. Right, so what we're gonna do, okay, um, if we open this animation, which is, fight, you can do that by, oops, stop this right here. You can hear sound, and that's because uh, before I did this tutorial, uh, I quickly tested something. Um, I'm going to remove this. Um, so normally what you'll see is basically this, right? When you open the window, this is the animation, right? So, and in this animation, um, you can basically see the character, okay, and the movement that he is making. Now, what we want to do, and we'll do this maybe first, is add a sound to the animation. That is extremely easy to do, but you do need a sound uh, in your uh, library. So I'm going to pause this really quickly. I'm going to quickly remove this, put this on my second screen for now. And uh, I have some sounds here. Where were they? Real recorded uh, guns. Okay, if I take out fire, I've got a whole bunch of, a bunch of cues and waves and all this type of stuff. Um, now, what we're going to do, we're going to give this character a sound whenever the gun is firing. Okay, that's basically uh, what we're going to do. Uh, so, we do that by, let me bring this one back, so the animation tab that we had. Okay, and in here, you see how we have notifies? Yeah, and we have one here, we can add additional tracks uh, if we wanted additional uh, sounds or any type of effects uh, that go with this. So what we want to do is add, see, I right click on this track, on notify and add notify, and I'm going to say play sound, right? And this one, I can click on it, I can move it, uh, I'm going to put it at the beginning, right? And here you can choose what sound do you want to add, right? Very simple. So I'm going to look for a sound, any sound, uh, but it has to be one of a, yeah, like a single shot, for example. Okay, so maybe this one, uh, but instead of this, yes, actually I'm going to do a cue, and I'll say what. So the black ones here, the the these are wave files. That's the original raw sound, and a cue is you you can maybe compare it to like a blueprint for sound, something like that. Um, it's kind of like the wave file with additional effects on it, right? So I'm gonna take a cue instead. So let's do the single shot two. So that one, because I do like this, you can play it, right? That's the sound. And this is the sound of the cue. So it's the same, but on the cue, I can modify things. So I'm gonna click on this, right? And now you're gonna see that uh, at this frame right here, it's gonna play this sound. So if I were to press play, it's going to repeat the sound 
uh, over and over again, like with a machine gun, right? So let's quickly see. Uh, let's play this and see how that looks. And if you've listened carefully, the last shot, it plays out that last um, echo sound and all that. So it plays out. That's very nice. That's actually what you want, right? So we have this in our animation now, and we want to save it. Okay, so that's very important. We save this animation or the setup, right? And we are going to close that for now. We'll get back to it. Um, and you can, by the way, you can test this. Um, now, I'm also going to show you the reason why I wanted to add a cue. I'll press play so we can test it. And right here, okay, uh, you're going to see that there is a distance on it, right? So the closer I get, the more noise it makes. If I jump off this cliff, the sound goes away, right? Goes away because I'm going away from the sound. Right? Let's press F again so we can go back to him. Uh, this is because of the cue, right? The cue that I'm using. So if I were to go to this cue and let's see, uh, this is with guns. Uh, I think, wait, I think, which cue was it? AKM, I think. AKM, and then I had the single shot two cue, I believe, right? Let's open that up. Yes, it's exactly this one, right? I've added this to it. I'll just remove it so you can see it. So normally, if you were to open this up, this is what you'll see, right? You'll see your wave, your your wave player. So this is the original sound, right? If you play Q, that's the original sound that comes out. Now, um, but if I were to just leave it like this, it will play the same volume everywhere, right? I don't know, I don't want that. I want to make sure attenuation. I'm going to add that into here. I'm going to just put it here, for example and the output to there, and this output to there. I'm going to click on this one, and um, here I'm going to press Overwrite Attenuation. Right? And then it's going to provide me with information like the inner radius is 400, the fall off distance is 3,600, so meaning that once I get at a distance of 3,600, okay, the sound will be off, okay, it will go out. And the inner radius is basically where the sound is. And then as you go further and further from the sound, then it gradually goes down. There are a lot of settings that you can set here to make it even more realistic. I'm just going to do it like this. And that's all you got to do. It's very simple. So all you have to do is just add this one, the very first one. And then you can um, add that distance so that the sound is not the same everywhere. Of course, you can add a million other things to it. These are all different type of, like you can add a modulator, a mixer, if you wanted to add a, another sound that goes with it. Uh, you could add looping, um, all kinds of stuff. I would say play around with these, okay? Drag them into your, your um, setup here and then uh, make all kinds of notes. Huh? So just like you would do with a material, and with a mixer, you would have, for example, another wave file here and another one, and then you can mix them. Uh, and you can uh, make random sounds, like if you were to do footsteps, for example, uh, then you could use uh, a few of these. And then um, make, uh, through a modulator, you could say, okay, I want this one and then that one, or I want uh, this type of noise, so I want it to be a little bit louder here, a little bit less loud there. Uh, and with a random, you could say, okay, use this one first or that one. Uh, and that type of stuff. You could mix them up, a lot of things, okay? So it's very, very useful. That's why you would create a queue. Creating queues are very easy. If you don't have a queue, I'll quickly show you how to do it. First, let's save this. If you only have WAV files, so let's say you imported uh, some WAV files of your own, right? Uh, just like here, let me quickly go, let's take this off and go to WAV files and say you got some gun sounds here, like AK-47, and here you got, for example, your, your caulking, your caulking two, your draw, uh, your draw two, your holster, all that stuff. If you wanted to turn one of these, all you have to do is right click and then create queue. That's it, right? And then it will create a queue. And then you can add all these fun little sound effects uh, and uh, modifications and all that stuff. Right, so with that done, so now this animation has sound. The next step would be to add a gun to it, right? Because this is not really, I mean, it's all great and all, but we're missing a gun, right? So in this case, that's where we're going to look at how to add a socket, right? So for that, we're just going to go to the skeleton of this character, 
Right. And for that, we go to uh, just anywhere. Just even here, you've got your mannequin, for example. You go to your mesh. This is the skeleton, right? You double click that, and it's going to open up, right? And we're quickly going to have a look, right? So this is your skeleton tree right here. You've got everything you need. And when you click on anywhere, right, you are basically clicking the skeleton of your um, character, right? Let me lower this down a little bit so the camera speed is not too fast. And don't forget, when you press the Option key and your left mouse button, you can just rotate around. Press F if you want to focus around something, uh, and then you can um, just look around. Okay, so the Option or Alt key and then the left mouse button uh, will let you uh, look around the middle mouse button. Uh, oops, um, rotating here. The middle mouse button will let you go up and down, left, right. And the right mouse button will let you zoom in. So very quickly, just to recap on that. Uh, but, so what we want to do, we want to add a socket. We can add sockets anywhere on our character. We could, for example, add a pair of glasses, right? And then we would have to add a socket somewhere here near the head, right? Uh, or we could, maybe you want your character to have a sword, right, in the back. So you would add a socket on one of the spines, right? You can go here, spine number three, and the clavicle, and so forth. So you would choose from where on would you want that socket to grow. Right, but now, because we're going to do a gun, all we need is to create a socket from the hand. So we're going to go to the upper arm, we're here, let's see, uh, let's, where we got, hand. Okay, so I want to create a socket from this hand. I'm going to press F, so I'm rotating around it. Press Alt, so I can perfectly rotate, and I want to create a socket from here on. How do we create a socket? That's extremely easy. Just go to your hand, click on it, right click, and then here, at socket. Right now, a socket is like an additional bone that you can move, and I do strongly recommend that you move it. So you select it, and then let's move it out a bit. So let's see. There we go. Let's move that out. You do have to select your socket. It's very important. Uh, so we're gonna put socket somewhere here. So where the socket is is basically where your gun is going to spawn. Very important. All right. So. Let's put it more or less here. And to preview it, you can go to your socket. So you have to make sure that only your socket is selected, right? Um, if your hand is selected and you also have your socket, then it's not gonna allow you to do the preview. So just make sure that only the hand socket is selected, right mouse button, and you say add preview asset. Yeah. Now, if you've downloaded, in my case, I've got a weapon, so it's SMG and it's a skeletal mesh. I'll explain later on why it is a skeletal mesh and not just a traditional mesh. Right, so we've added our gun, which is now added to the socket, but as you've noticed, it's not in the right way. So what we wanna do is rotate it, right? So you can just rotate, say about, mm, let's see, what does 80 do? 80 puts it more or less okay. I have a feeling I might have to put it to 70. Yeah, I think 70 is a better uh, better result, right? So I rotated about 70 degrees. Double check, quickly check the finger where it is. If I look at it like this, I would say that I'd have to move it a little bit more so that the finger can get to the trigger. Um, and this doesn't have to be perfect, perfect, but you know, just, just about like this. Okay, and then let's quickly look around. Right, this is somewhat acceptable, right? Again, it doesn't have to be perfect, uh, just a place where you can say like, okay, fair enough, right? And remember, you, just like I made this socket here, I could make another one with, for glasses, for a hat, for a coat, for any clothing, for any additional, like if there was a belt or anything, you can do this for anything, but we're just gonna keep it to the hand right now so you can see it, right? What is important to do once you've got this, you have to save it, right? So. Now your skeletal uh, mesh has a socket attached to it and it says, okay, right here. You can also preview animations, by the way, if you wanted to check if the socket was right. So for example, the one that we're gonna use was, let's see, it was a fire, I'm gonna type fire, and it was a, let's see, yeah, rifle fire from the hip, right, that one. So, see, now you can double check it, but quickly, the noise <laughs> because we already have noise it 
But what we're also noticing, by the way, and here I need to put it to two. Right here you can clearly see that the gun is not positioned well. This is why you can test your animation. So we go back to the skeleton and we go to the socket right here. And we're going to rotate it, I think about one, maybe two. Could be two. Okay, and let's try the animation again. Uh, so it was fire. Of course, it's going to make noise again, so I'll stop it in a second, but let's press again. Let's double check. See how it is. Uh, it's better now. Okay, it's definitely in the right place now. I was holding the gun the right way. So this is why you want to test these things out, okay, just to make sure that uh, it's in the right place. So what do we do then? Then we just basically save. Okay, we want to make sure that that's saved. Uh, we want to make sure that the socket is also saved, so it's in the right place. Uh, yeah, that's all good. Okay, so we can close this part, and then we're back here. So now, with this, we go to our animation starter pack. We have to go to the animation itself, okay, so this one. Right, you can also just click on this um, magnifying glass and it will take you straight to the animation uh, that we're talking about. Now, why do we still not see the gun here? Well, that's because for that, you need to create a blueprint. Okay, you need to create a, a blueprint that states, um, show this gun within uh, this character, right? So we're gonna do that. We're gonna add that really quickly. We're gonna add a blueprint, right? And it's gonna ask you for a name. I'm just gonna leave it at like this. So you have to make sure that your animation is selected. That's very important. Then you create a blueprint of that animation. Then you press select. Okay, and now this is the uh, animation that we've got, right? This is the blueprint that we've got. Now, uh, in this blueprint, I'm going to, see, I'm gonna select my skeletal mesh. And here I'm going to add a component, right? And that component is another skeletal mesh. Remember the SMG, the gun that I want, is a skeletal mesh. It's not a static mesh. In your case, you might have a static mesh. But in my case, this particular weapon is a skeletal mesh. So I select that. I just call it gun, for example. right? And I go, see, it's right on the floor. And I'm going to leave it there for now, just so that you can see the skeletal mesh. right? So the skeletal mesh is going to ask me, OK, fine, which is the mesh? Which one do you want? Right? So I go to SMG, in my case, and I press that one. Now, it's not in the right place, obviously. We want to make sure that we parent that to a socket, right? We want to put that gun in that hand. Now, we already have a socket, so all we have to do is just when we click on here, we can go to our hand socket right here. Now, when I uh, put it there, now we've got the gun um, that's moving the way we want to, right? Now, we're going to save that. We're going to compile. You have to compile in order to have this uh, work. I'm going to close this, and there we go. Now, the gun and the whole thing is right there, right? Now, let's quickly do a playtest. Let's move. There we go. What we want to do next is add some um, muscle flare, right? So this thing at the front of your gun, for those that don't know, this thing is called the muscle. And from there, uh, you can have a flare, okay? Like a, a gun, like when, when, a, when a weapon fires a bullet, you've got that effect. So I also have some effects for that. Uh, let's see, right here, I've got a few. These were also not for free. Um, and they're really cool. They're basically particle effects, right? Uh, I will put the description, I mean, I will put a link in the descriptions below so that if you want to have these same effects, you can download, download them as well. Now, in order to make sure that this gun has that effect, then I have to go to the gun itself. Where is it? Uh, that was the SMG. Let's just type in, or I can just do it here. Right, SMG. I have to stand in content though. Right, this one. And I'm going to double click this so that it opens up. And let's quickly click on anything right here, rotate around it. 
Okay, perfect. So as you've seen, there are different bones here, right? So you've got charging handle, magazine, safety, trigger, um, culminator, and the buttstock bone, right? So what I'm going to do, just like with our previous uh, character, we can create a socket. So we add a socket, right? And we're going to move it. Press W, or, well, normally here. Now I'm how I can move it. Right, and I'm going to move this socket to the front of the gun. Okay, I didn't want to add it um, on the other bones, like for example, the magazine bone, because that one animates. You, you can animate that one, right? When this thingy right here can move back and forth in this particular gun. So if that were to be attached to that while it's firing, then you can create the issue of moving your fire, um, your particle effect as well. So, as with this one, we can test this bone, right? So we're going to add a preview asset. Uh, this time, we're going to, let's see, what was it? Flare? Was it flare? No. It was, I have to think about what it was. Yeah, I think it was muscle. There we go. We've got different, uh, we've got a whole bunch of them. Right. Uh, I'm just going to use this first one right here. Right. So it's going to load up a little bit. Give it a little bit of time. Let's see. And I can already see that it's not in the right direction. But no worries. So we're going to let the uh, shaders compile. It goes very fast. Give it a little bit more time. Almost there. There you go. There we go. Okay, so here again, what we need to do is rotate, say about 90 degrees or so, yeah, so that it's perfectly in place for when it has to fire, right? And that's more or less where we want it. Okay, so we've, gone our, we've done our test. We know that it works. So again, what do we need to do? All we need to do is just save it, right? Then we close this one again. Now, remember this, we can go here really quickly now, this was the animation one. Uh, let me quickly go here. We had the blueprint of this. Uh, we can edit the blueprint. So just click on here, open blueprint editor. We go back to our viewport right here, right, where we have this animation. And what we want to do now on the actual gun, remember, we have a socket now. We added the socket on the gun itself. So what we can do is uh, add another component to the gun. We want to add this time a particle system, which is the one we had. Uh, we can call that muscle flare, for example. And then we go and get the particle that we need. So again, we just type in muzzle. And we could put any flare right now. If we didn't want number 14, like the one we chose earlier on, uh, we can put it elsewhere. So again, it's not going to be in the right place because it has not been parented to the right one, right? So this is the one we need. We do this now. We parent it to the right socket, and it is firing off the right way now, right? So what we're going to do, we're quickly going to save again. We are going to compile again. We're going to close this, and there you go. You've got that same effect on your weapon. So let's go back to the do a play test. And there you go. So what does this mean? This means that now you have a working character that you can add into your sequencer and you can add any of these animations with guns, with when they're firing, when they're running, uh, any of that, plus your sockets are already ready. So if I were to, for example, let's see, I can see quickly if I have from my mega scan, no, from my Mixamo, there you go. I had some characters from Mixamo. I've got, uh, yeah, I've got this one. I don't have one where he's firing the gun. Um, I do have one already with a blueprint, 
I could technically quickly, if I really wanted to, just to show you that, that it perfectly works. I'll just add it here. Otherwise, I'll have to go to Mixamo and all that stuff. I'll just quickly put this guy right here. Right? Let's quickly rotate him as well. And if, for example, uh, this man had to fire his gun, he doesn't have to do it right now, but if I were to go quickly to Edit Blueprint and Open Blueprint Editor, it's the same system. Go to our viewport, right? So this is the animation that is playing, right? And if I were to go back here, so let's remember we can add to this gun a particle system, like we did. Uh, here we can add it to the socket that we have in place, right there, and then add any particle that we want. Let's do another one this time. Muzzle. The TV doesn't take too long to load up. Let's do this one, for example. See, and I think it is a one-off, one, one -off, I think, that one. It's not a, a repeated uh, thingy. Maybe this one. There you go, and this is a continuous one. Um, it's also compiling the shaders. But it's identically the same system, okay? You add, that's all the particles that you want, as long as the shaders have compiled. Let's see. Obviously, this wouldn't really make much sense for this to happen, uh, but same system. Okay, so you just save, you compile, you close it off, and there you go. You've got more particles, right, that interact, obviously, with your environment. And like I said, in Sequencer, uh, now he would be walking on the spot, but if I were to put him into Sequencer, and let's see, do we have a thingy for this? No, we don't. Um, Anyways, so that's how you can add all kinds of uh, sockets, elements to your characters. Uh, and it's quite useful because you can then, like I said, here stack them up and uh, make all kinds of combinations uh, for your animations. Uh, it's very, very powerful. I mean, with all the stuff that you've seen now, where you can import your animations from Mixamo, uh, where you can attach sounds and items to your characters uh, and your animations, you can see the power of this tool now. It's really customizable times. I mean, you can do basically anything you want. So that's it. That's, that's the video for today, uh, how to add additional items to your characters uh, and how to um, add sounds. And there you go. Uh, in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to look at how to use cameras uh, within uh, this environment so that we can add a few fun animations and then uh, put some cameras uh, to move and to focus uh, on particular characters, track characters, and that type of stuff. All right. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, guys.